Good evening. This is Edward, sonsofgod.com, and it is January 14, 2020. We're just going to jump in the deep end here and talk. This is really not prepared, but it's something that we need to address and the Lord needs to speak. So, Lord, we have you on spot tonight. I know that within us, your countenance and presence is growing ever stronger daily. I know that we are the vehicle of the word. I know that if we don't speak, the word does not get spoken. So, we will take our responsibility in this equation of end time events to speak the word. And Lord, you haven't placed this burden upon very many. There's thousands of preachers out there and a whole lot of nothing being said. At least not kingdom-focused words that are set to see the wrap-up of all things. And that's what we're talking about. So, Lord, we we don't take the mantle lightly, and we know that the word must be spoken. And we also know, even if we're still in the state of knowing, or the state of coming to know, and that is the indwelling of your presence in us. You know, Paul talked about it and says, for me to live as Christ to die as Christ, whatever. You know, and then he said, if you speak, speak as an oracle of God. That was way back then. It was a different dispensation, a time of the church age, a whole different world than what we deal with now. Now we're talking about something that we are reaching, like Paul said, on tiptoes. That was Philippians 3. Tiptoes, reaching in, to grab something that is right here, right now, but we're still laboring under the full ability to recognize and acknowledge what you have done in us, in the sons specifically, Father. Tabernacles came and went, but something changed this past year. As far as I'm concerned, with a handful And that is the indwelling of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ on a level we have not known. And it's interesting when we talk about the indwelling, because we're going to ramble here. We're going to talk about warfare in the heavens. We're going to talk about Michael and the archangels. We're going to talk about our positioning in God and what we have to do to help Michael right now in the conflict that's happening in in a broad scale. We're going to talk about all of that. But Lord, help me to not lose my focus. And we just begin to address this one step at a time. The indwelling of the Father and the indwelling of the Son is something that is a mystery. It is a marvel. The angels look upon this frail human creation and they truly marvel you know, they truly marvel because it doesn't, it's hard to understand. And they only see a measure. That just because they exist in the realm of spirit doesn't give them open vision to, to clearly see everything and or know the Father's heart or the, the plan as it's progressing and at what stage the plan is in. But this issue of the indwelling of God is something that has to hit us like a Mack truck. I mean, it has to hit us so hard because you talk about a life-changing experience. People can say, well, I was baptized. And hold that thought for a minute. So we're talking about the indwelling of the Father. And that is something that we need to experience now on the deepest level within our being because 
it's happening and it's so much further within us. And the suns in general have been ripped off. Ripped off because they've been in the warfare and the warfare has been very personal. So it takes you into something where you're on a, a personal assault, not realizing really what's happening on a broader scale as the suns begin to manifest. But the whole point that, that I would like to see in a meeting with God right now is a Mack truck hit us broadside and we know the full indwelling that has happened within us. And I mean, it is a mystery. It is confounding. I mean, if you stop and you think about it, we've rehearsed the word, we've talked about the word, we know what these scriptures are, 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 are mean, we know the direction the Father is headed, we know His plan to a degree. We know it's about dwelling and possessing the sons, and yet the enemy tries to get it to where it's still at arm's distance, still coming, but not quite. But we're talking about leaving the realm of believing into a full realm of knowing. So, as I said a minute ago, what we need is a meeting with God that hits us like a Mack truck. Now, everyone can go and look back and, and, and see and reflect on meetings with the Lord you've had, things that changed you, uh, even the, the very basic being filled with the Spirit, and all of a sudden you're, you're a completely different person, and you've left the realm of, well, I believe, into a realm of knowing because it became a deep embedded experience. So there's an experience that is hovering over us right now. And it's an experience that God is pressing us into, as uncomfortable as it may be. And that is an experience of knowing the indwelling of God within us. And it's something that we've been talking about now for a very long time. And we've gone over it and you know over the last 10 years uh, but things are deepening and so many times the lord has come and said you're so much further down the road than you know and the satanic conflict has come to keep the sons tied into some kind of personal battle something that is focused on a lesser level and not realize how deeply integrated they are in the overall vision and reality of what God is doing. And when the Lord says, you're so much further down the road, it, 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 to me, it, it's just a, an admonition. We need to break the barriers within our mind or whatever it is, God needs to break upon us. And now we're not even talking about Resurrection life, per se, even though it is all kind of tied together. We're not talking about, you know, getting the, the tent from above. These are things we've been pondering on lately. But we're talking about something that is life-changing. When you first met him, or the various times that you've met him, and they changed you, not just a paradigm or a different view, but something that changes you. Now, you could say, well, are we talking about in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in the zing of a moment? Possibly. Although I look at those scriptures in relationship to the change of the physical body, where, you know, we experience the same energy that Christ himself received from the Father when he appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration. But what we're talking about here is perhaps just a little bit different. And I remember... This was probably 20 years ago. And at that point in time, we were absolutely nowhere where we are now. And maybe it was even longer. And Judy had this appearing. And 
the Lord told her, you know, do you know why you love Lou? You know, and, and, and you know, I'm just kind of paraphrasing. And he said, it's because it's me. It wasn't about Lou, even though Lou has, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the presence or the, you know, the physical manifesting. It was about the Lord. He said, that's why, you know, you love him. And you can look at that and say, well, that was, God, that was 20 years, 30 years ago, whatever it was. I don't recall how long ago it was. And in our infancy at that time, we had no idea of how strong that presence of Christ was. And, and yet at that point, so many years ago, the indwelling of the Father and the indwelling of Christ was on a level that we were not able to even understand, much less perceive. Now here we are, many years in the future, and we've gone through so many things. All of the sons, this is not about just, you know, Ann and I, Ed, whatever. It's about all of the sons in the path to becoming the sons of God. And it comes down to realizing what you are and realizing the, what God has done. You know, we, and yet the enemy has sought to kind of rip us off. And so we're still reaching in some ways to attain or reaching to try and just be aware of it. And you get these, these flashes, these moments where you're aware of that indwelling and you feel the power and you feel the anointing. And it's not just a gift of the Spirit where the Holy Spirit is manifesting and, you know, some things are going on. I mean, that's very prevalent in the church world, the gifts of the Spirit and all of those types of things. This is entirely different because God said from the outset, I'm going to do something new, but will you, can you be aware? And that's been a struggle for the sons to come into that, that revelation that it's more than a revelation, but it's, it's just a transformation. And so we're in the midst of battles because God is pulling us into the battle of the ages. And I mean, we are so much into the battle of the ages than we understand and we're still putting out brush fires or still dealing with contacts or bonds or, or, or thinking that it's really all about us. And certainly the enemy has taken bonds, contacts, things that would be potential back doors to use to come against you, to abort what God is doing, to hinder you, to make you doubt and you know, put you into this whole battle thing. And, and we, we've been missing it because the enemy does not want the sons to really know who they are. Not like this. And this is what we must have because we have direct access to the Father now. We probably have, always have. We've had direct, we have direct access to the Lord Jesus Christ as we stand right here and we speak. He is an integral part of everything that comes out of our mouth. Every thought that we have, every vibration and energetic thing about our being is enwrapped and enfolded in the presence of the Father and the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the enemy has worked overtime to try and keep the sons out of that state of knowing. And that is something that has to change now. But we're not talking about just a revelation or just another glimpse. We're talking about something that changes 
the sons. It just it's just a root level change where they cannot go back to being what they were, but they've become something different. And that was always a you know, promise. You know, I'm doing something new in the earth. And what is that new thing? It's the sons of God. It's a new creation. Flesh and blood doesn't, doesn't inherit the kingdom. You know, all of these things. So we're in, we are in the throes. However many there are. Whether there's a handful or there's a, a hundred spread across the face of the earth, we don't know. But we're in the throes of this transformation. And I mean an absolute transformation. Because we have access. We have access. The Father is speaking to us. The Lord is speaking to us. They know what we're saying because it's what they're saying. And tonight, I just took a stand and said, Okay, Lord... We have to have a word. We have got to have something here to give us a grasp of what's happening and what do we need to do here. So I kind of put them on point. Of course, the answer is, well, yeah, just, just speak the word. Open, open your mouth. Let's, let's, let's see what happens here. So this is something that is crucial right now. And unfortunately, we're still playing a little bit of catch-up because we're being pulled, or shall we say, we have been pulled into the warfare of the kingdom. The principalities, thrones, dominions. And we're seeing telltale signs in the earth, whether it's volcanic eruptions that began happening this morning in the Philippines, or whether it's this pseudo-war with Iran, that keeps flaring up. And I saw this morning that that's going to continue in some fashion that, that they're, not, they're not going to be able to put the lid on what's going to unfold now. What's coming is coming. And there is not going to be any wisdom of man or ability of man to put a lid on it and prevent it from coming. That, and, and so, in light of that, I began to think, Lord, our warfare is not with flesh and blood, of course. Our warfare is not concerning us. You know, we go through these personal battles, and they are personal battles, but that's not what it is. It's our connection in the realm of spirit and our calling and the importance of what the sons are, to the last chapters of the establishing of the kingdom that's really happening. And so, even at this point, we're not exactly certain where, um, where it's all coming together. But I was looking at the scripture in, let's see here, where did I find it? In the book of uh, Revelations, chapter 12. And we've gone through this a number of times. And, and there's so much of it that has been fulfilled, is being fulfilled, will be fulfilled. So you can say, well, how, you, you can't really look at the scriptures and extract them in some manner that makes some chronological sense. Or some sense based on the carnal mind. Because it's not, the book of Revelations is very random. And, and, and so looking in verse 7, it just hit me again. And yes, I, I've read this, and yes, this has happened, and is happening, but there seems to be something different now happening in the war. It says, and there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels waged war, and they were not strong enough. And there was no place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old who was called the devil of Satan, so on and so forth. And, and we've talked about that. We've seen this as something progressively happening. 
But there is something that has just stepped up several notches. And, you know, you can go on and it says, Now the salvation, power, and kingdom of our God and authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser has been cast down, and they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and the, and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life, even unto death. And I think we've been facing that a little bit. But this is kind of a, a reach here a little bit. Because I feel as though Michael and the archangels and those that are in this warfare with us need a little help. Now I'm going to stop this and, and, and uh, continue um, on, uh, with it, number two because this, I only have so much duration on this, uh, this machine here. So hold one.